time. Uh, welcome to our second um, Bobcat virtual um, parent meeting. As I uh, shared with you last time, we'll continue to hold these every other week um, until people stop showing up. Um, so thank you for being here this evening. Welcome. I have a couple of things I'd like to share with you, and then I'm certainly happy to listen to how things are going, answer questions, uh, see if parents have tricks and things that they'd like to share with one another. So I'll start off. I did want to say I know for um, middle school, excuse me, for high school, the high school did have conferences last week, but Bobcat Virtual's conferences for anyone who has a full-time Bobcat virtual teacher, um, as well as um, middle school teachers and um, uh, elementary teachers, our parent-teacher conferences will be the same time as the middle school and the elementaries, and that includes all of our students K-12. If you have a, a teacher who's a full-time Bobcat virtual, if your children have a teacher that's a full-time Bobcat virtual uh, teacher, those conferences will be held on November 10th, 11th, and 12th. Um, and that Friday, the um, 13th, will be a half day of school for everyone, um, including our Bobcat virtual students and our uh, teachers. And we'll be sending out information next week about how to sign up for those conferences. They'll all be virtual, of course, um, and we'll be using the same um, mechanism as, or, excuse me, the same sign up that they used at the high school for the conferences last week. The other piece of information I'd like to share is that we will be, um, we're still working on setting up a picture date for school pictures for our students. Um, I appreciate everyone's patience. Um, believe me when I tell you I'm as frustrated by this as all of you are. Um, it's, it's something that's completely out of our control. Our elementary schools are just starting to, to have their picture dates um, um, uh, uh, lined up and they will be the first week of November. My hope is that we'll be able to get the company here uh, that second, uh, excuse me, that third week of November, which falls after our conferences. Um, and it will be, those will take place either on the West Campus of the high school or the main campus of the high school. We're going to do them with um, our high school, um, with, with the high school as well. Uh, we have the, between the high school and Bobcat Virtual, we have the largest number of students, obviously. And so it will take uh, a good deal of coordination with cameras and, and photographers. But we're still working on that, and um, uh, due to things that are out of everyone's control, including yours, uh, limiting space, limiting number of students that we have in any one place at one time, it's making it a little bit more of a challenge to schedule, but they are coming. Um, and those are really the only uh, two big announcements that I, uh, ate, I had uh, to share with all of you this evening. Be happy to answer any questions that you have or um, um, if you'd like to share how things are going, what, what's been going well for you, for your children, um, questions like that, I open the floor. I, I set it so everyone would mute when they came in because we always forget to mute, myself included. So if you have a question, just unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. Hi, uh, Mr. Neal. <coughs> I just spent the last hour <coughs> trying to convince my 17 year old not to drop out of high school. He is in 11th grade. Yeah. He has emailed you. I have emailed you. I spoke with you at the last Zoom meeting. Yeah. And our concerns have still not been addressed. Um, they're still assessing the late penalties. His economics teacher just closed the first module that he can't even make up now. The stress level is just so unfair to a young adult for the amount of work that is being expected of them. Um, I have a master's degree. I did two online degrees. I know what this stuff's about. Mm -hmm. And for I don't know about the other grades, but for the 11th graders, it's pretty ridiculous. Is it more than the economics class? Uh, the chemistry class is absolutely ridiculous. You know, there's 21 journal entries for every module. He can watch the video, take the quiz, ace the quiz, do the assignments, which he enjoys because he thinks they're, you know, thought-provoking assignments, but uh, he can't catch up on the 15 to 20 or 30 journal entries that are required for each module. And then the instructor wants to just blast out emails that, you know, you guys aren't doing this and I've got 4,000 of these things to grade. Well, you know, she's doing like everything to the T of the canned product and not looking at 
is this the right thing for our students? It feels like once a student gets behind, it's impossible to catch up and it piles on. My, both my kids are all A, all AB students, and we've had similar stress level conversations. Um, and I'm the same boat, I have an MBA, did mine online, so I'm very familiar. It's extremely difficult, it's an Easter egg hunt to try and find the assignments. My, um, my youngest is in a language arts class, he's in seventh grade. He had to go to four different places just to find the assignment. So the assignment is it posted in, in, you know, bits of it is in four different places just, just to find it. The assignment is required to be completed in Word. Um, he's in seventh grade and up until now they've used Google Docs or PowerPoint. They've never used Word before. So I'm at work and I'm on FaceTime with him trying to show him how to open up Word, how to use Word. Um, just like little things like that. It seems very simple for people who have used it, but if it's not something that they've used before, um, it's very, very challenging. So you, I, we spent 30 minutes just figuring out how to get to the assignment. The teachers are still communicating multiple different ways. Some are doing Jupiter, some are doing Canvas, some are doing email, and my son has just had it. He won't even check any messages now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had made that same feedback as well. Um, there's no reason to send Jupiter messages. Um, use the announcements that files everything in the class. That way, it, they, get, they get 12 messages every day. So if, you, if they put it in the announcements, I did notice some of the teachers have switched to that. That way, if they need to go back, it's, it's in the class. They don't, they don't have to fish through these, these long inboxes to find their communications. And you're talking about the announcements that's in Canvas, the yes. communication system that's within Canvas. Yes, yes. I have a daughter in sixth grade and she's encouraged to use Canvas, but Canvas doesn't work the way that we're told it's supposed to work. She doesn't get responses from the teachers. Yeah. Several, several emails, no response. Um, it takes for me to have to email them and then I get a response days later. Um, now today I'm being told to use the actual school email. Don't use Canvas, but what's what we're told to use is Canvas. Other ones were told that Jupiter works better and to use Jupiter. I mean, there is no uniform platform for them to use that actually works. We're having a very similar problem with our 11th grader as well. She's very behind in some of the classes. And economics the, is one of them. Economics specifically and yeah. falling behind and having a horrible time trying to keep Total up. meltdown. Like for the last few days, I had to talk her out of not wanting to drop out as well. So and, and to be clear, she's been working, I mean, 12 and 14 hours a day. She's been busting her butt trying to get things done. But she's so far behind mm -hmm. and can't cut, catch back up. And her workload, I mean, I don't know about the other kids, but she's got economics, trigonometry, uh, chemistry. It looks more like a freshman in college than yeah. a high school junior. And, and unfortunately, she's had the same experience. She's reached out to uh, you know, people from teachers. your staff, to teachers, administration, and has basically been given a, well, we're it's sorry, it's so everyone. hard. It's yeah. hard for everyone, and, but no adjustment. No, no accommodation at all. It's just, it's hard for everyone to do what you can. Yeah. But would no classes be hard if they were in school? I mean, I'm listening to everyone. I have an 11th grader. I have a 12th grader. My son graduated from Grand Blake. Those classes are mm. hard, guys. I mean, my, my son is a, in a, ju a junior at Michigan State. He had these mm. classes when he was an 11th grader. And yep. person, they were hard. They weren't easy. And so, I mean, I know we're all changing and we're all adapting. My 11th grader has these classes and, and you know, I, she's doing fine. And I think we're being a little hard here. I mean, we need to have a little grace. And yeah, it's difficult. And, I, you know, I work every day and people send me emails a lot of different ways. People communicate with me a lot of different ways. My son goes to Michigan State. His professors are talking to him a lot of different ways. We have to prepare these kids to, to deal with that. And if we think that it's just going to be perfect, that's not the world we're living in right now. And, and I'm sorry, I, I'm getting a little irritated. I, I'm just, what, where are the solutions and what would you like different? 
Because I think Mr. Neal, he's I've offered solutions and I've had no response. Okay. But, but what are you, what, what are your solutions? Maybe you should try getting on this call and start with that versus, hey, my son wants to drop out. Because I'll tell you what, I have an 11th grader and she has those classes and she's getting all A's and she's working through it. And I have a senior and she's in all AP classes and college classes. And guess what? She's getting all A's. And I have your daughter, no one cares. This is not about whose child is better. This is about finding a solution that works for everyone. Then bring some so he's not having issues, then that's awesome. However, I'm here to tell you that I'm a healthcare provider. I work locally in a hospital. Our COVID numbers are rising. The situation is not going to get any better anytime soon. So since our kids are all virtual, perhaps we should find a way that works for everyone to find a solution that makes sense for everyone. And let me finish, please. You chose to do online self-directed. That means we not everyone is online. Let me finish. You chose to do this. Now, there is another solution that after this semester, you can go back and do hybrid and have a teacher teaching. Everyone that picked this knew what they were picking. This is self-directed learning. That is what you signed up for. So just to be clear, you all picked that. We are very happy that you are having a good experience with this, and I don't want to diminish your experience with this. However, there is you are problem. seeing multiple people who have identical problems with their students. We are trying very hard, and our students are trying very hard, and for some of them, it's too much. And we are trying to ask to see if there are any solutions. And we some don't of have us are good. doing this for health reasons because we cannot go back into the school. <laughs> yeah, we like, really can't. I understand. But, I, 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 if I can interject, um, mm. I do understand what you're saying. And um, <clears throat> if you're looking for... You know, I, I'm not certain what's happening with the economics class that as far as not being able to continue in closing modules. That's not a part of our deal at all. It's, the kids are supposed to be working at a self-paced. Um, and there are, there, are, there are assignments that will take longer than other assignments, and it does balance out over time. But, but if, uh, if I'm hearing anything, I'm hearing that the pace needs to be slowed a little bit and pulled yes, back. Yes, sir. Uh, and I'm hearing that loud and clear. And that's something that we can, that all of us can, work together on the teachers and, and ourselves. We don't want our students having a lousy experience. We don't want our parents having a lousy experience. That's not what we're here for. It's not it at all. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I've noticed with our kids specifically, um, our children that have ADD are having a really hard time trying to just hammer out a schedule to be able to stay on task mm -hmm. without falling so far behind to where they feel so overwhelmed. Um, we have three students in the program. One's doing great, but the two that have the ADD are really struggling to try to keep track. And me, I'm a stay-at-home mom, and I'm in front of the computer all day trying to figure it out with them. And so, I mean, it's it's just trying to get them to a point where they are not feeling so overwhelmed. You know, yeah, they're a little bit behind, but it's not quite as pressing like you know as a teenager they have all these other things that they're worrying about so having all these emails coming in constantly saying you're not doing it you're not doing it my daughter today I told her to turn off the notifications on her phone for her email because she was just stressing so bad that tears were rolling down her face so it's just she she can't catch up because she can't find a good starting point because she's so far behind on everything. I mean, her trig, her trig class, she's a trig student that didn't get their trig until what last week, the week before or something. It was pretty late in the program. So she's just over overwhelmed with everything being so far behind. And every minute that she spends stressing about trying to catch up, she's falling further behind. So that's, the problem that we're having. And I did reach out to the school's guidance counselor for virtual Bobcat to try and work with that a little bit too. So we're trying, but it's good to know we're not the only ones. <laughs> and I like to know, what do you do when the teacher won't get back in contact with you? Send an email to me. Okay, okay I've done that too. Cause okay. all of, the, all or, of my, my grandson's me. teacher I've tried getting in touch with them, 
and they will not answer their emails or anything back. And he not got so far behind and stuff that he, I don't think he ever going to catch up. He didn't. And I try to get advice from his teachers, but they won't get back in contact with you. I'd like to say something. Um, <clears throat> I have two students in um, Bobcat Virtual. I have a uh, eighth grader, um, and I also have a sophomore. And, you know, we, we have experienced some things as well. And I, I totally empathize with everyone here because I'm hearing both sides. You know, fortunately, my children aren't doing um, so bad, but I do agree with some things as far as um, – getting in contact with teachers. Um, now I will say this, I know you just got done saying that you've been trying to reach out and everything. I will give credit to Mr. Neal. I have called him directly probably a dozen times um, because of situations that have been going on because I wasn't have any luck with teachers. And I will say he will, if you call him directly, he will try and do everything he can to fix the situation. Um, but Mr. Neal, I agree with, um, a lot of these parents, you know, um, we are still dealing with issues with Joshua's art. Um, as of today, he tried to redo his assignment and he is still unable to redo that. Um, I've been actually logging in as him and going on his Jupiter to make sure he's not missing any emails or because, you know, kids are kids, you know, they get distracted and all of that. And he has three emails that went out to the teacher and still has not received a response. But I did see that she sent emails out about other things. So she is emailing, but I'm not quite sure why, you know, some teachers are not responding to the kids. I would say that would be my only complaint. Um, I, I do feel for all these other parents because I do realize, you know, every child is different. Every child has a different format of learning and they have strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, I do have two kids that have ADD and ADHD. Um, and at first it was a little challenging, but one thing that I learned and, and I'm not saying this is going to work for everybody um, because obviously every child is different. But one thing that I started doing is being more disciplined with the kids. Um, and, and this may not work for everybody's lifestyle. You know, I'm not trying to critique or anything. I'm just saying what works for us. Um, we start off the day at seven o'clock in the morning, just as if we were in school. Um, and that doesn't work for everybody. I'm just saying for us, we start off at seven o'clock and we kind of have like, um, chat time to discuss what we're going to do. I make sure every day I am not on top of them because I do feel that these kids need to have some kind of sense of responsibility. Um, obviously elementary, you know, maybe even get a little bit more hand in hand, but middle school and high school, they do have to have a little bit of ownership in what they're doing. And so one thing that has worked and I can honestly say has worked to the best with my boys, they really struggle staying on task. And when they know what they're doing every single day from, you know, eight o'clock, they have to be online. Um, and doing their assignments. At 11 o'clock, they take a break and they get snacks and energize and, you know, some kind of thing. I noticed at first when I was being a little bit too disciplined and pushing them from eight till, let's say, one or two, it was really negatively impacting these boys. And so I just started breaking up the day. And now, you know, I had it before this meeting, I wanted to touch base with them because obviously I could think they're doing one thing and things may be easy and they tell me something different. So I wanted to really get their input. And I said to my 11th or my 10th grader, I said, I want you to be a hundred percent, um, truthful with me because I'm going to be hearing and talking to other parents and I want to make sure we all have the same, you know, um, outlook on things. And I said, do you feel overwhelmed? And he said, you know, it is a lot, but when we're in school, we do have a lot as well. The only thing that can be overwhelming is you don't have that, um, constant interaction with the teacher. And I think Mr. Neal, that would be again, back to the, you know, one thing I read on your letter is that they're supposed to reply within 24 hours. And 
most of the time that doesn't, that doesn't happen. Um, and, and that would be my only complaint is the response is not really, um, now some teachers is amazing, but s some teachers there, there's no response, but, um, they said, you know, certain classes, obviously, if you have an AP class or an advanced class, they're going to be a little bit harder. But having that um, scheduled time for my boys has made all the world. And I mean, it went from seeing missing assignment, missing assignment, late assignment, late assignment to now it's maybe one assignment, two assignments a week I'm seeing late. So I don't know if that would help anybody, but it's just something that has been going on in my household. We do something similar. Uh, we, I schedule breaks mm -hmm. after every class like you would do in school. So mm -hmm. um, instead, I had my kids were trying to do everything, like one class all day, and mm -hmm. that, just, that just wasn't working. So mm -hmm. one of the teachers kindly suggested, hey, they should not work more than an hour on a class. And I, I changed everything. And so then I got the kids on that routine. You know, as much as you want to work on this and get it done, just get to a point where you can stop after about 50 minutes, take a 10 minute break, and then go on to the next class, but work on every class every day. Um, and, and that did definitely help. Um, so I agree with your suggestion and building those little breaks in. Now he, you know, my youngest actually, it works out really well for him. He knows what he should be doing. He starts, you know, kind of in alphabetical order for the way they're listed on the sheet, goes through them all. Um, and, you know, he's, he's chipping away at it. He's, he's still got two classes that he's pretty far behind in though. A big yeah. thing that worked for us is I actually, t I sit down every Sunday night with each of, the, of my kids for, you know, about a half an hour and we look at everything that they've got coming up for the week, what to do, what the due dates are and things like that. And we plan for each day for each class, like, here's what you're going to do each day. So they have, like, they start their day kind of having a plan of what lessons and what assignments they're going to do. Um, one other piece of feedback I have that has been a frustration is supplies. Um, sometimes you're at a point where you're going to do an assignment and it's due that day or the next day. And then you realize, Oh, I need, I need a protractor or I need something else. And that would have been nice to know at the beginning of the semester when they had these syllabuses and their home pages and all that stuff, we went through everything, made supply lists and went to Staples and got what we needed. But yet we are continuing to find surprises. Like we get an assignment and he can't do the assignment because he doesn't have the tools to do it. And we can't every week be running out to get supplies. That, that's something I would give feedback for the teachers for next time is at the beginning of the semester, give um, supply lists so people can yeah. be prepared. Uh, Mr. Now, I wanted to make a comment too. You know, I, this, this platform canvas is I think a very good platform overall. You know, I'm, I've seen many things in, in my career I and mean, I work in information technology and, and I think it was a good choice by Grand Blank to, to use this platform. Um, I think one of the challenges that I've, I've noticed is that the, the teachers utilizing it are not, not as uniform perhaps as they should be. Um, some of them are doing a fantastic job at setting expectations for the students and, and you know, getting the information out there that they need. But there are some teachers that are, are really not using the platform at all. You know, there's uh, one class that I can think of that the, there is no, no assignments whatsoever. Everything has been in the uh, announcements and, and it links off to several different uh, locations. And it, it really throws them off because it, there's a lack of uniformity there. And especially in that one particular class, which I cannot for life of me think of the name. Social studies. The social studies, which grade level? Six. For six. Yeah, social studies at sixth grade. Um, it is, there's no way for us as parents to help keep our kids accountable. Because, well, as an observer, I've noticed I can't even gain access to some of the things like his textbook and stuff like that. Yeah. So I have to huddle around his Chromebook. So. Is it the TCI? Yeah. TCI. TCI. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah, and it took us a very long time to find it, and thankfully we finally did. Somebody posted on the um, the parent page a video of her daughter showing me step by step how to get there. Mm. So, because you know my my son that was having a hard time finding the book, he he has um he has ADD and he has autism. So it was like I was like, hey, it's supposed to be in your apps, and he's like, I don't have any apps on this. I don't know what you're talking about because he thinks of apps like on his phone, not on his computer. So I mean, it took us a really long time to find it, but. 
I don't have access, so I can't read along with him and help him, like, almost do the teaching part that he's not getting from the Bobcat virtual. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, you know, supplement that portion of it, but it's almost impossible if I can't access it. Yeah, and really, I want to make it clear, too, that the, the teacher is – the, the content that the teacher put out there is, is good. You know, it's, it's well thought through and it's not bad per se, but there's, really no, nice and I like her. but there's no uniformity with the rest of the teachers. That's what throws the kids off. Yeah. You know, and, and no accountability. So. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. And I appreciate you sharing that. And that's one of those, that's a, I'm not making excuses, but that's a perfect example of, of yeah. someone trying to do something that, uh, that, it doesn't okay. match the rest of the format. Mrs. Ch yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know that, well, I do know who the teacher is because she's the only one. What she, how she set that up and the reason she's using the TCI materials is she's operating on the assumption that eventually all of our students are going to, many of our students, I should say, are going to go back to, to brick and mortar or face to face. Those are the materials that they're using. She did not like the curriculum that Accelerate Ed provided. So that's the curriculum and the materials that they're using in the class in the classroom. That's the that's the curriculum that we use every day if it was a normal situation. And the problem, and, and so I can I can certainly look into how we can set that up so it matches how it looks in other in the other format. Yeah. So you don't have to go on a hunting trip every time you're looking for something. It's it's TCI, usually parents, a lot of yeah, parents will never have never had access to TCI because it's like a textbook. It is a textbook, but it's an electronic subscription. So your your uh, your student can sign in anytime, and you can see the whole thing. But it's mm. it's different than having a hardcover book in front of you, and that, I'm sure that causes some yeah. frustration. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and again, one more thing too is that that again, I, I really want to do give some praise. It's not all that we're, we're, you know, all of the parents are complaining and, and don't like the system or have nothing but complaints to give. We recognize the fact that the teachers were thrown a curveball and they, they had to learn a new system and they, they had to figure out how to adapt as well. And they're human beings, you know, they're not, they're not perfect. None of us are. So, you know, again, you guys did a great job and we're trying to express some of the concerns, the hope, that it can you know improve even more in the future and we'll, we'll be able to continue using this that's that's what yeah. these meetings are for and uh, because everyone here myself included i'm sure there's something we would all rather be doing at 6 30 in the evening on a tuesday or thursday evening so uh, i i'm not um, i appreciate you saying that i'm not but we hold these meetings because we can only get better through feedback and through hearing what the experiences are of not only the, your students but all uh, all of you as well that's that's the purpose of these meetings. So, you know, I, I, I appreciate, I don't take it personally at all. I appreciate feedback very much. You can only grow and get better by having dialogue. Okay, I have some information to share. I have a junior also, and um, leaving from the regular classroom setting, he is a 3.9 National Honor Society student. So he's used to hard work. This has even been overwhelming for him. I've had to be very involved, uh, probably more so than I have been with him since sixth grade. Um, we did set up a schedule. I agree with some of those other parents. That has definitely helped. He gets started at 7 a.m. in the morning, and he attends, tries to attend each class in order um, that he set up for himself and so that he's trying to touch every class every day. It still has led to him getting behind at times, um, especially right at the beginning. He just now in this past week has, after many weeks, has finally started to see a light at the end of the tunnel at basically trying to get caught up on those things. One of the other things we do, I think one of the other parents said this, is we do sit down on Sunday. I sit down with him. We look at what's coming up for the week so that he can make out a list for each day, Monday through Friday, of what's being due and what's coming up. And then what we started doing was we started assigning a time to how long he thought it would take him because I had heard it should only be taking, you know, each class should only be taking 45 to 50 minutes a day. I don't think there is a class that he has touched for less than an hour and 15 minutes a day. And I realize that some of that is, you know, going to be considered like if they were in the classroom, they would then have homework at night. I, I get that part of it. 
But when each class he goes into is taking more than that 45 minutes, it starts to add up a lot by the end of the day. And if these students have anything else going on, like a driver's training, a sports activity, a part-time job, then that really starts bleeding over into their evening. And by the end of the week, they could already be behind because every single class, especially for him, has been taking more. And I think the extra time that it's taking, for him at least, if I've figured it out correctly, is because it was one thing to go into a class and you hear a teacher speaking and giving information, and now there is such a high level of reading. And he was a student that I let him decide if he wanted to go back to the classroom or if he did want to try virtual, and he wanted to try virtual. So he has some buy-in in it and that he wants it to be successful and he wants it to work. So he's working really hard on that. But it's difficult for him to say, okay, this, like, let's say something is due today for algebra. When we're sitting on Sunday, something's going to be due for algebra on Tuesday. I think I say, worst case scenario, how long do you think it'll take? Hour and 15 minutes. Today, it was a government test. The test he thought worst case scenario would take him an hour and a half. He was on it for almost two and a half hours. That is a huge issue when it comes to him trying to plan out his week it might be helpful if these assignments had some sort of idea of how long they might actually take that would help with the students planning i think i definitely second that i the, agree uh, too setting expectations for the students and having them are rather being able to guide them and how long something should take so they can give a little bit better idea of how to plan things. And by the way, you're doing a fantastic job at, at teaching your kids uh, time management. I think that's been a big problem for probably a lot of the parents. I suck at that, sorry. Yeah, so, but, <laughs> but you know, that, I think that's really important for this type of system. So, you know, great job on that. Thank you. Well, and I, for me, I'm happy that, I mean, I don't want to see him struggling, but I do realize that's also a part of life is struggling and working through it. I am thankful that these struggles probably would have hit him when he did get to college. And I've been able to be here walking him through it about his better time management and how to try to organize things and all of that for him. So there has been a learning in that, but it is very difficult to watch your child struggle that much when they were not struggling before. Yeah, well, one helpful hint might be not to try to do every class every day. Um, I know that's been something that my girls have found very helpful, especially the pace um, with this, uh, maybe concentrate more, core concentrate on one particular subject and focus on that and get through that. Um, that's well, I had a yeah, I had a staff member reach out to me and say that my son wasn't spending enough time in forensic science. And I said, but he's keeping up. He was behind, but she said nothing's due until the end of January. So he has more than enough time to get caught up. And she contacted me because she said, well, she sent me some sort of chart showing that he hasn't been spending 45 minutes a day in class. So my response was, is that I'm having him focus on his core classes, his four core, and his two electives are maybe on in the evening if he has extra time or on the weekend. But my son's also been doing probably six or seven days a week of school, just trying to get himself caught up and try to get on even keel. And he still is probably maybe about two weeks behind of where he should be in forensic science and is just now getting caught up in music appreciation after all this time. So I don't know. I'm getting told that they're supposed to touch every class 45 minutes a day. And when he didn't, then we get an email asking why, you know, making me aware that he hasn't been doing that. It's funny so you said I, forensic science. A couple of the kids have been to my house. I ask them like how it's going and the one class they keep bringing up is my girls aren't in that class, but they keep telling me that that is a really challenging class. So I don't know what's going on with that class, but that's a common theme I have heard. I, I think it's the system they're using for it. I think it's called Edmentum or something like that. And it's just, it looks completely different than everything else. And so that was very challenging in the beginning. And when we first got the email, we didn't even realize that it was a class for him at first, but we worked through that part. Part of that, um, some of the classes that our students have, and that's a perfect example of one of them, we wanted to make sure that we could offer our students 
the same number to the best of our ability, the same number of classes that we have that we would offer in our face-to-face -face or at our high school. And there's only so much, there, there are only so much, there's only so much curriculum we can carry in one, in, in uh, one package. So some of the classes, a, a lot of the classes actually, we have over about 200 students who are taking classes through what's called the GenNet portal, which has been happening forever. I mean, we've, got, we've been a part of the GenNet um, consortium for a very long time. And that's where Edmentum is one of the companies that, that if there was a class that we didn't offer virtually, we could purchase it through that um, through the GenNet portal, which is run through the Genesee Intermediate School District. And that's an example of one of those classes. Um, and, and unfortunately, one of the other things uh, that I think hit a lot of our students is for the first time since we've ever been doing business with them, it was a very long turnaround to get the login information out to the students who were, who were participating in a GenNet um, a class. Uh, the forensic sciences is one of the, and many of the AP classes are other examples of them. And it took two weeks uh, to get the logins. We can also, uh, and we've shared this with any, any parents and students who have reached out with concern, we can reset the date for that, meaning the two weeks that they lost, we can extend it out to into February to make up for that lost time. So, so that time is then extended and they have more time to be able to finish without feeling so um, overwhelmed with trying to cram it in two weeks short of what they had. It's very easy to do. Mr. Neal, do you have an update on the penalties for late work? We talked about it last meeting. I've emailed you a couple times. It was my understanding that penalties for late work has been removed, but I'm hearing from other parents now that that's not the case. No, and the closing of the modules also is a, a big deal. Yeah, yeah. We've experienced a few modules that are closed and assignments that are are no longer possible to turn in work late. You know, okay. It adds undue stress to the. Yeah, it student. does. I agree. 100%. Oh yeah. Hey Jeff, I had a question on um, an eleventh grade American Lit uh, class. I I've been focusing on grades and and assignments and everything in Canvas. We just received an email. I believe it came from Jupiter from our uh, son's 11th grade American Lit teacher saying you haven't turned in enough assignments or and you're receiving a failing grade. Um, obviously, look on Jupiter and and it shows a failing grade. But Canvas, you go in there, he's got a B. So is there some sort of correlation that they're expecting to have between the Canvas grades and the Jupyter grades? I'm assuming we can ignore that sort of communication if we're checking Canvas, but um, I, I emailed the teacher and they didn't respond. So any updates on that sort of thing? You know, Jupyter, that's a great question. Jupyter is our, um, it's our grading platform, but that's not where the grades for these classes are being housed. If there are, if there are, um, if there are classes through Accelerated Ed, those grades, you can see the running total in Canvas. That's a part of the, I mean, that's a part of the package. So, uh, well, package is a poor choice of words, but that's a part of the learning system. So I don't know why there shouldn't be any grades in Jupiter unless there's one, there's, we do have one teacher, but that's not, it's not an American Lit class that's doing their uh, online class completely through Jupiter, but that it, it's an AP class and it's not American literature. It's the only one that I'm aware of. So, so uh, Jupiter is the housing point for grades. So at the end of the semester, at, uh, after uh, January 22nd, teachers will move their grades from, from the running total in Canvas and put it into Jupiter. Yes, that's true. We've had a couple of my son's teachers that have communicated out that they were putting the grades in Jupiter. Um, so that the parent got the notification, because if you had your notifications set up, you know, like to notify if they had less than a C or whatever. Um, but the, the problem that I'm having with it is that uh, chemistry again, um, you know, the teacher has communicated to us that if you turn in late work, it's not her priority to grade the late work. Uh, everybody that turns it in on time should get graded first, and I can understand. Um, but yeah, my son's got a couple hundred point assignments or 40 point assignments, something like that, that he handed in in September and they're still not graded. So he's got like a 30% in the class and, and they're the big point assignments where all these little journal assignments are worth three points and he's got zeros on all of them. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so I guess I'll assume with, with the American Lit teacher that we should go by the Canvas grades then. And I, it's just, maybe you could reach out to him. Yeah. Um, and and it, I think it's Mr. Papadich was his last name. Yeah. Um, maybe you could reach out and, and try to clarify or help him to clarify to the parents um, what we should be paying attention to there. Because I, I, I think there's a, a disconnect between what's being recorded in Canvas and what's being uh, sent over to Jupiter. Okay. Thank you. I will. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Neal, um, I just, I had my boys um, come up into my office and I was asking if they as students could give any kind of advice to other students or maybe to, you know, advice to the administrators to get some kind of a little bit more um, smoothness going through. And I asked um, Josh and Josh, one thing that Josh said is that um, <clears throat> some of the teachers have changed the, the formatting, the way assignments are where they can't move on to the next assignment until the one's completed. And he said that works really well because what was happening is he was seeing all these assignments in Canvas and um, he was doing assignments ahead. Well, then one would show missing. Um, and one of his complaints is Mrs. Saffron um, in algebra has, that's why he has had missing assignments there is because there's no check mark and he would move on to something, not realize it because, you know, obviously these teachers aren't saying, okay, Monday do this, Tuesday do this. So he would move on, didn't realize he was moving on, and then assignments would show missing. So maybe if, um, I don't know if anyone suggested that, but maybe have a little bit more uniform as far as all teachers having it, if, if possible. I don't even know if that's even a possibility, but having it where um, the students can't move forward until a, an earlier assignment was, you know, done or... Um, what did you say, Josh? Um, th there was check marks, um, you know, because I think like he was trying to work ahead to oh, math time. So tomorrow I can really focus on language arts, you know, or whatever. He didn't realize that he was passing up assignments. So maybe if there's a way that we can um, have it to where they can't move too far ahead, if there's missing a previous assignments, something like that. I have a comment. I have a comment about that. Um, my daughter is in Algebra 2 algebra two class, and she got stuck on an assignment, and she couldn't go forward because she got frustrated and stressed and couldn't figure it out. So she could not bypass that assignment until she finished or fixed that. She could not go to anything else because it was locked. So that put her even farther behind, about four assignments behind, until we finally got through and figured it out. And it wasn't through teacher help because we, again, it was locked up. So there was nothing we could do until I finally sat down with her long enough time to figure it out. Because I thought when she emailed her teacher, she would get a response and she didn't. And she's not always the one to say, hey, mom, you know, I need it now. And it just mm -hmm. kept adding up as she was trying to keep up with the other classes. And she starts at 730 in the morning and sometimes she is not done with her classes until 8 30 at night and she's still behind and I tell her you need to you need to stop you need to get away from the computer and we'll catch up if we do we do but it is getting crazy and they, they are getting behind and she the, works hard throughout the, the whole day the locked assignments is not a good deal for everybody no no, no I, I, you know, I misspoke. I just asked him. I misspoke. I apologize. He didn't mean locking the assignments. I guess on some of the teachers, they don't lock the next assignment. What they right. it shows like a check mark that right. it's completed. There's no grade. There's no grade yet, but it shows a, a check mark. Most of his teachers do that where it shows, okay, yes, you completed this. They can right. still move forward. But like, for example, Ms. Saffron um, doesn't have that on her platform. There is no check mark. So you don't know if you did it or not, you know, unless you go into each assignment. So he didn't mean to lock it. I misunderstood him. Well, there so. are some classes that are locked like that, though. And oh, it is yeah. like for a kid like mine who's so far behind right now, he's cherry picking those big point assignments. Right. And if the module's locked and won't let you move forward. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 
the check mark. Yeah, and we got hung up on one too, where we were waiting for the teacher to grade a couple assignments, and we couldn't do any work in the class because we couldn't move to the next module. So we had to email the teacher and ask, "Can you please get these graded so that the next module will unlock?" And that was a little frustrating. The um, check marks is a setting that the teachers can put into the grade book. It's pretty simple to do. Okay, yeah, those that, check marks are super the helpful. The check marks are great. Totally agree. Yeah. Yes. And he you said, like, them, um, you got to keep looking, figuring out what they got done and then get done. Agreed. And exactly. And that's what he said. You know, Miss Saffron is the one he keeps saying over and over again, there's no check marks. And so, and I didn't realize, you know, check marks would mean so much. But I guess when you're staring at, you know, 25 assignments, it means a, a big. <laughs> it's well, and even seeing the check mark, it gives you a sense of accomplishment that you got it done. It's just sure. a little. A little yeah. bit it just helps. And you don't have to search for the work, the check marks, are, and it's, it's a pretty easy setting. And so that's something I can certainly encourage everybody to do. It doesn't take very long to do. Can I ask a question about the Gen Net elective classes that we have? Yeah. So like Canvas, I, I'm an observer for both of my girls and I can go in and see like what the grades are and what they're doing. But for the elective classes, I have gotten no information about any way to be an observer or a parent portal or I don't get any notifications. You know, she emails the teachers and she says they're not really teachers. And so we've had to go through Mrs. Robuski a lot, which isn't really fair to her. And then the marketing class just all of a sudden went away last week, which created a huge panic after she had worked so hard because it came three weeks late. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, we got it back, but that was another four days that we lost. And so I don't know, I can't reach out to this teacher in any fashion. I don't, you know, there's no way for me to email. There's no way for me to check a grade. I, I don't have any idea what's going on. So do you have any advice for that? Yeah, it depends on it. Yes, I do. And what I would I would suggest you do rather than me take the time to look right now. If you if there's a time where you can call me sometime tomorrow, because many of those vendors do have a parent observer. I don't have I don't have direct control over them like I do the classes that are on 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 uh, Canvas or through Accelerated. But I can log in. I can see what the students are doing and I can uh, see how it is because they're all a little bit different, but there are uh, mechanisms in those classes where parents can uh, join as observers. They call them something else, I don't remember now. But if you give me a call tomorrow, so I have the specifics, I can log in and frog my way around through it and, and uh, see what we need to do to get you to be an observer. Uh, they, as I said, they call it something else. I don't remember. They all call it something a little bit different, but they all have that capability except for one, one company. Okay, thank you. Sure. I gave my direct uh, office line last time um, and I'll give it again. It rings right at my desk. And so that's the easiest way to contact me. Um, I do respond to emails. Uh, I get almost 300 emails a day. So I'm usually three or four days behind in responding uh, because I'm just not that good. Um, but a phone, I can't ignore it. It's right in front of me and I'll answer it every time. And it's 591-6375. That rings directly to me. And... Um, this never leaves my side either. That's my cell phone, and that's 397-3418. Now, if you call that and I'm not in the office, I'll answer, but I won't be able to look something up. But I'll still answer and look it up the next day. And I can vouch for that because, again, like I was saying earlier, you know, at the beginning we were having um, – my oldest didn't have, like, three of his classes, so I was contacting him. Um, I even, he sh um, shot me a text and I responded. So he is on top of it when it comes to phone calls, for sure. I haven't been shy about reaching out to teachers. 
And I have not experienced the problems with teachers. I, I, I have nothing but praise for um, the responses, their reactions, um, their helpfulness, their willingness to make improvements and to listen, um, their um, dedication and their working nights and weekends and willingness to set aside time to help the students. So, um, so I, have, I have zero complaints about the teachers. I, I send them positive notes as well. So, you know, I, at work, I tend to hear all, only complaints. So I just sent a message to Mr. Pottinger, a U.S. history teacher, um, because he does an amazing job of um, making it so easy and so simple to stay on task. Everything is in one place. He has a beautiful homepage with his, the same Google Meet, same mm -hmm. code, same schedule every week. I don't, we don't have to yes. go searching for the code. It's beautiful. It is, it is a no-brainer. And and, and to proof to that is my kid is completely caught up in that class. So, um, so I sent a message just with, with a great thank you. So um, I don't, I don't want to, you know, anybody to misunderstand, you know, I, I've provided feedback to Mr. Neal as well. I haven't been shy about that. And I've seen responses and I've seen, um, you know, changes that have been made um, improvements. So, um, so I know that the system, everybody's working really hard to make it great for everyone. I agree. I agree. I agree. I think a lot of all the teachers that my, we have a seventh grader um, and his teachers have been just amazing and not just on the Zoom meetings, but I mean, even after they've explained, you know, anything that the kids need, they'll be like, you know, what are you guys doing today? How are you feeling? You know, what do you like to do after class? Like they really just make it like, you know, continue keeping that connection between teachers and, and, and the kids. And it's nice because the kids also get to see each other. So they really make it, um, you know, they really make the kids feel comfortable. And I know that all the, all the staff and I've told, you know, Jeff, Neil, you know, I think they're all doing a wonderful, wonderful job. So. Thank you. You know, I said this uh, last night to the elementary group, and you're all experiencing the same thing. Um, anyone who thinks virtual is easy is out of their mind. All they have to do is try it um, because it is not easy. It's not easy for parents. It's not easy for the students. Um, and I think those uh, of you who have shared that, that they have their students on a regimented schedule, that's one of the best things that can happen. Remember, we're, we're and I... I, I don't mean to make these words sound how I, I mean them sincerely. We're at week six and a half out of an 18 week semester. And it does wax and wane. And the very beginning was very difficult and overwhelming for the students. But I've also found that uh, over time, and it's not time heals all, that's not what I'm trying to say, that over time as kids develop their own routine, they do find the rhythm and they and they they can get caught up and and there's also some some things that we can do as well i'm sorry to hear that the teachers are not responding or some of the teachers are not responding to emails or to the students that's that's just something that we can't have happen um because i don't want the students uh, to lose touch with their teachers but but um as time moves on there are there are tweaks and there are adjustments that we can make to help the students be successful Nobody, I mean, we all, we all, all of us, your families, all of us here at school got thrown into something that was completely unanticipated. Um, and I've said it a million times, but if you were to go back this time last year, I defy anyone to predict that we would be sitting here tonight and we would be in the situation that we're in right now. That's, but that's reality. I say all of that to say this. We are going to continue to work our very best and hardest with you to help your kids have ex have experiences that are worthwhile. It doesn't it doesn't uh, make me feel good. In fact, it hurts my heart to hear that kids are really struggling. That they want to leave school or they're even having those conversations. That's just not it's not it's not why I decided to be an educator. It goes against everything I believe in. So I can assure you that that your what you're sharing is not going unheard, and it is something that we will continue to strive um, to work to make improvements, to work to make things um, so your kids have good experiences. It's not easy, though. I know none of you are asking it to be easy. I know that. I, I hear that loud and clear. But I want to reiterate, this kind of learning is not easy. It's very difficult. Um, and um, I, I don't want 
your children to be stressed. Um, I think somebody made the suggestion they spend an hour or an hour and 10 minutes a day on each subject area. That is a very good suggestion. And that is something I would encourage you to do with your kids. Um, those, are, those, those students who can't focus for long periods of time, who have a very difficult time with focus, this is actually a platform that really is, it would meet their needs because they can get up, they can walk around, they can take a drink. The trick is, the trick is building in a discipline where they can come back and go back at it. That's hard. That's a trick. Uh, um, and that takes time to develop because that's a skill that takes a lot of time to be, to develop. But this kind of a platform where you can walk away, you can get a drink, you can go walk the dog, you can go run around in the yard, and you can do all of those things without being yelled at by the teacher for being out of your seat, um, which in a normal setting would happen a lot. I was one of those kids. So I can tell you, I understand that deeply. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, we will continue having these meetings because this is the only way we can grow and we can improve. And that's something that we will continue to do. And it's something that we'll continue to work on. I'm not certain I can promise you it's going to be perfect, but I can, I can, I can promise you that we'll go out of our way to make each day better. I wanted to add one more thing that I thought was helpful. Sure. Several of the teachers uh, have been creating little videos, maybe at the beginning of the week, instead of a long email to read, they, you know, hey students, um, you know, welcome to week five or six, here's what you're gonna do, here's where the assignments are, just a quick, you know, five minute video, five or 10 minute video, and, um, you know, it's a, it's a break in the routine from, from constantly reading. So um, the little videos just are super helpful. Ms. Chapa does that, um, Ms. Casper has been doing that. So um, I, I think that that's a good suggestion too. I agree with you because that was the one thing I, I told Jeff. I said, Ms. Belial, she does the videos every week, you know, on Monday. And, you know, the, the reality of things is that these kids are not going to read, you know, a full page email. I mean, that's, that's not realistic. They're already having a full load, but a little video and, and it shoots some positivity and it starts their day off or their week off in a positive mindset. So I agree with her on that. The, the videos are amazing for these kids and it feels like a little bit more of an interaction too. You know, these kids are already, you know, some kids do worse than others with the lack of connection with people. And it makes them feel like they are a little bit more of a, more of a classroom setting, you know, by seeing their teacher face to face and, and not everyone can do the meets, you know, I try to get the boys to do the meets, you know, when they can, but that video is huge. And I've actually heard that from their mouths. Oh my gosh, look at the video from Miss Belial. And and that's huge. That's huge right now because it, it, it makes almost like a silver lining for these kids. Thank you. One thing I found helpful too is for um, one of my sons I bought, like it's, a, it's on Amazon, it's like $20 or maybe even less, a basket of like different types of fidget toys. It helps him when he's sitting and like reading and doing, you know, watching the videos to be keeping his hands busy. It helps him to stay focused. They're so used to playing video games and things like that all the time and things moving fast. It's, it helps them kind of de-stress and be move, using their hands while they're just sitting and reading their assignments and their lessons and stuff. Uh, as you can see, that would help me. I'm fiddling with pens all of the time. So that is a good suggestion. Thank you. Um, any other things that, that you're finding helpful or any other things that uh, possibly I can help with or um, anything at all? We only have about another minute or so left, but uh, I, I want to make sure everyone has had an opportunity to talk. I appreciate these meetings. I want to say thank you for that. So we can hear everybody's perspective and get more feedback on just not it's not just our, you know, our own perspective. So I appreciate you having these meetings and everybody's input. I love these meetings. When I was a building principal, I'd have a PTO meeting, five people would show up. So this these this is awesome. <laughs> 
Yeah, definitely want to second that. Thanks for having the meeting for us, and you know, and and just thank you to all of the teachers out there that are that are trying hard and doing their best. You know, so. And thank you to all of you. I know as parents, it's hard to see your kids struggle, and I know you're working hard to help them, and we appreciate that too. It is a team effort. It is, very much so. Well, it is 7.30, and so we will do this again two more weeks, two weeks from tonight, um, and we'll be back same time, same place. I'll send out a reminder a little bit earlier uh, than I did this, this last one. I just thought I was sending out a reminder the day before, but it seems like having it at the beginning of the week as a reminder is a little bit easier, so that's fine. I'll get, the, I'll get a reminder out a couple weeks from now on Monday so everybody knows when we're meeting times and same place. So... Uh, I won't keep you any longer. Thank you all very much for being here this evening. Thank you for the comments. We appreciate it. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night.